Everything that we've done so far is to create a Tor data file. This is simply a text document that contains all the information that we would need to run our Tor once at runtime. If you're ever unsure about something that might be going wrong, it can be a good idea to open up your Tor data file in your favorite text editor and take a look at the JSON that gets written out by C360. From our scene view, we can see everything that gets contained in the example Tor scene. There's a camera base containing our camera and a bunch of components, a complete 360 Tor object which creates everything that we need to run our Tor, and potentially some base plates or other prefabs that we've included to help you guys out. The first component to take a look at is the Complete360 Tor component. It exists on the Complete360 Tor object alongside a Tor loader, a transition system, and in our case, a time script. The Complete360 Tor component has a few properties that you can set on the object. The first is whether to auto begin the Tor as soon as the play button is clicked. The second is an entry ID that can be a UID or the name of your media that you'd like your Tor to start on. There's also a default loader and a default transition system. If you'd like to understand how Complete360 Tor works, you can open up most of these scripts and look at them in Visual Studio. Everything is commented and it's designed to be as extensible and accessible as possible. If you'd like to modify how your Tor is loaded, take a look at the Tor Loader script and specifically the Tor Resource Locator Override class, which allows you to override behavior for loading prefabs, textures, resources, and video clips. If you'd like to change the way that your media transitions, take a look at the fade transition system and have a look at writing your own. It's worth noting that it would be fairly trivial to implement the digital salmon fade Unity package into Complete360 Tor, though bear in mind that not all of the effects in the fade package will work in VR if you're making a VR Tor. Inside the Complete360 Tor object, you'll find the media view. The media view has a media surface, which you shouldn't need to modify, an image reactor, which lets you change how image nodes are visualized, a video reactor, which lets you change how video nodes are visualized, and an entry your reactor, which uses your entry your marker from your mapping panel to affect which way the users are looking when they enter a particular piece of media. By default, the entry your reactor has two different options, absolute and dynamic. When set to absolute, you're effectively telling C360 to line up all of your entry your markers along north. When setting it to dynamic, you're saying that every time you enter a piece of media, no matter where you came from, you'd like to be facing your entry your marker. If you'd like to write a different entry your mode, open up that script and feel free to edit. Below your media view, you'll see a hotspot reactor and a prefab reactor. By opening up these scripts, you can see how C360 manages hotspots and prefabs. If you'd like to change the hotspot that's being used or modify the existing one, select the hotspot template, drag it out like you would any other prefab, make your changes and click apply. From C360 version 1.9, you'll also find some base plate objects, which you can use to set up in-engine base plates so that you don't have to bake your base plates into your videos. Let's take a look at some of the camera components. The camera base object is used by the entry your system and you don't need to worry about it. On your camera, you'll see a variety of components that can be used to navigate your camera around the scene or interact with your hotspots and prefabs. You have a variety of options which can be used independently or with one another when controlling the rotation of your camera. The mouse look component, the swipe look component, and the gyro look component. To enable or disable these components, you can tick or untick the component enable box or right click and remove the component. It's worth noting that not all of these components will be appropriate for your build target. For instance, having the mouse look turned on on a mobile platform will break the way that the swipe and gyro look work just as having gyro look enabled doesn't make much sense on PC. Also, when working with Unity's native VR or a third-party VR system, make sure you turn all of these components off and let the VR software handle everything. Also added to the camera are two input raycaster components. The gaze raycaster component fires a ray from the transform forward, and the mouse raycaster component fires a ray from your mouse through your main camera. The rays that are emitted from the two different input ray casters are used to interact with your prefabs and your hotspots. If you'd like to change the way that your input is handled, take a look at these two ray caster classes and write your own. A fairly common question is whether or not you can use a VR motion controller with our input system. The answer is yes. Just add a gaze input ray caster to the hand transform for whichever VR SDK you're using. Finally, we have the fade post process component. This is a stripped down version of the component found in Digital Salmon's fade package. 
If you'd like to create your own transition shader, just take a look at the fade shader added here. Or copy one across from Digital Salmon's Fade Unity package.